Sometimes there's more to a fart joke than meets the eye, but try not to get pink eye. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 smart shows with stupid humor. For this list, we're focusing on smart and well-written TV series that indulge in the immature, lowbrow, and downright silly to get a laugh. A smart show is engaging and unpredictable, often using parody to provide insight or social commentary. Obvious exclusions for this list are funny shows that critical consensus deems to lack these thought-provoking qualities. You're probably right. Let's take another swing at the script and give Bojack more to do. Now, when you say give Bojack more to do... Not now, Mr. Peanut Butter. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, why does the movie have to take place on Earth? You are blowing my head. Number 10, American Vandal. Chris, it is a shocking scene for Hanover High teachers who left school today only to find their cars vandalized with obscene images. When high school filmmakers pursue the vandal that phallically defaced 27 cars in the teacher's parking lot, plenty of jokes are sure to follow. This mockumentary Netflix series is incredibly self-aware, parodying previous true crime documentaries like Making a Murderer and Amanda Knox. Stephen did not fit that description. Stephen's hair didn't fit the build, everything. He didn't fit that description. But Judy Dvorak said he did. I mean, wow. The show masterfully unravels the mystery, almost making you forget it's centered around a bunch of graffitied male body parts. Well written suspense is often complemented by the show's sophomoric bodily humor and high school level maturity. Much like you'd expect from a premise based around such a topic, the show is shamelessly heavy handed in the mindless humor, but surprising in its meticulous storytelling. So, Alex, tell me, did you get a handjob from Sarah Pearson? Number 9, The Last Man on Earth. I need to talk to you. Carol! How many times have I told you this is my private time? Considering the fact that he's behind SNL's MacGruber, is it such a shock that this post apocalyptic comedy can be hilarious, smart, and dumb all at the same time? Will Forte didn't only create The Last Man on Earth, but he also starred as the titular man who thinks he's the only human left following a global epidemic. Mild spoiler alert, he's not. I'm so happy for you guys, believe me. But I also have to look ahead to the future, okay? And that's why I'm proposing a rigid sexual curfew slash noise ordinance. Throughout the show's four seasons, we follow Phil, Tandy, and company's attempt at survival. As such, the series touches upon serious themes, such as the eventual depletion of natural resources and the difficulties of trying to connect with people. This is contrasted with elements of dark humor and straight-up juvenile comedy, as seen in Tandy and Mike's sibling rivalry turned prank war. Well, I guess if we're being honest with each other, I should let you know that I'm uh, married. <gasps> Chef Miyagi! Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's okay, I'm getting a divorce soon. Yeah, my brother's actually sleeping with my wife. <laughs> Number 8, The Ali G Show. Check it, today we is chatting about medical ethics. What is the illness that they give out ganja for? Three unconventional journalists, Ali G, Borat and Bruno, star in this quintessential satirization of British and American culture. The show's creator, Sasha Baron Cohen, graduated with upper second class honors from the University of Cambridge, so it's no surprise that his trifecta of farcical characters, while masterfully deploying screwball antics in front of unsuspecting guests, did so with disarmingly sharp wit. You know what a burglary is? For real, I've done a couple. Okay. At the heart of each episode is an astute critique of Western society, making it okay to indulge in inappropriate, raunchy, and gross out laughs along the way. Can you make someone pregnant by taking them up the body? By in their body hole. Number seven, Bojack Horseman. Ah, show business, the great equalizer. Is that what it is? Todd? Bojack Horseman is a washed up actor battling through his own self-destructive tendencies on his way back to Hollywood relevance. While categorized as a comedy, the show deals with the dark underbelly of loneliness and depression in a superficial entertainment industry. Adam Levine has tweeted his sympathies. Today we lost an icon. Hashtag she will be loved. Hashtag watch the voice season 10. In an animated world inhabited by both humans and anthropomorphic animals, insights into the human condition are undercut with frequent animal related puns that mock pop culture. Crocodiles wearing crocs, a clumsy gecko intern that sticks to everything, hammerhead shark construction workers using their head, 
The silly and hyperbolic characters are a welcome distraction from the deeper existential themes at the show's core. Spaghetti or not, here I come. Number 6. Robot Chicken Tell my story! <laughs> What's going on up there? This long-running show of stop-motion claymation and action figures uses short skits to relentlessly satire all things pop culture. Its writers show their skill by landing an onslaught of astute jabs and sizzling burns within a series of short skits. My little pony, apocalypse pony, punish mankind for their sins. Despite the quality of its concise writing style, the humor almost always takes a mature, over-the-top or gratuitously violent route to land a joke. That being said, Robot Chicken takes no prisoners, parodying everything from film, television and politics to more niche subjects, like their classic retelling of Starbucks' inspiration for their logo. We're not doing mermaid porn, got it? Fine, fine, we'll do the coffee thing! But we still need a logo, and photo shoots ain't cheap. We'll use this in her memory. Uh... We'll crop it! Number 5. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia So you guys, what's the deal with those hands-free headsets that everybody's wearing in their ears, right? <laughs> this series follows a group of debaucherous friends and their increasingly depraved adventures in South Philly. Unlike other stereotypical friend-based sitcoms, the show is firmly rooted in the premise that its characters are terrible, deviant human beings. While its kitschy style may hide it at first glance, herein lies the show's meditative exploration into arrogance, selfishness, greed, and egoism. If that happens, it's gonna crush me, I'm gonna crumble, I'm gonna fall to pieces, I'm gonna scream, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Totally. Right? Dude, I think we should do like a Sex Pistols thing, right? Its premise is honest and refreshing, but the execution is hilariously amplified as all the characters' worst qualities are turned up to 11. Offensively funny in the most guttural, grotesque, and inappropriate ways, memorable characters don't have to be polite or relatable to get a laugh. But this is America! You can't just come in here and steal our land from us! I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how this country was founded in the first place. Number 4. Futurama Whoa! 15 miles over the speed of light! That's a violation of the law of Lorentz and Variance, baby. Light em up! <laughs> Fry, a deadbeat pizza delivery man, is accidentally cryogenically frozen and wakes up in the next millennium. The show offers the quality social satire you'd expect from Simpsons creator Matt Groening, but also proves that no matter how far into the future we go, humanity will always be something to laugh at. Is it wrong to eat intelligent animals? Absolutely not, Linda. I don't think anyone's here to make that claim. I am. Me too! While the unfamiliar landscape of the future provides many of the show's laughs, true hilarity arises out of the series' quirky and less-than-intelligent characters. Who doesn't need more of Zoidberg in their life? besides the rest of the characters in the show. That's why I love Earth. You can do what you want, and no one makes you feel guilty because no one cares. We're not listening! That's what I'm talking about. Number 3. The Simpsons You want a realistic, down-to-earth show that's completely off the wall and swarming with magic robots. That's right. oh, yeah. 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 Good. And also, you should win things by watching! This animated series is a pioneering satire of the nuclear family and America as a whole. For 30 years, the show has proven its ability to stay relevant, often portraying the events in Springfield as a microcosm of the real United States. I think it's full, sir. That's ridiculous! The last tree held nine drums! The show is constantly repurposed to parody the absurdity of concurrent politics and pop culture. Its lovably exaggerated characters propel the parody, turning good old-fashioned situational comedy on its head. While a lot of the humor is intelligently aimed at broader topics, there's no shortage of stupid jokes at the expense of Homer Simpson and the rest of Springfield. But what can I do? I'm just one, one man. Number 2. Rick and Morty Oh, good job, Morty. Y y you killed my best customer, but you saved a mind-reading fart. I like this name, Fart. In this sci-fi animated series, Rick Sanchez, a genius scientist and functioning alcoholic, takes his ordinary grandson Morty on interdimensional adventures. Since its premiere in 2013, the show has amassed a dedicated following, some of which are convinced that the show's detractors simply lack the intelligence required to truly appreciate its genius. Well, if it's any consolation, Summer, none of it mattered and the entire show was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I've got an idea, Rick. You show us your concept of good TV, and we'll crap all over that. I thought you'd never ask. A post on Reddit dubbed, to be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand Rick and Morty, set loose an avalanche of sarcastic memes. While the show deftly handles science fiction and offers some poignant satire, the humor is often anything but sophisticated. The show's creators have admitted to recording voiceovers while intoxicated and improvising many of the show's characters, one-liners, and side plots. And I'll, and I'll, I'll go out and I'll find some more of that Mulan Szechuan teriyaki dipping sauce, Morty. That, because that's, that's what this is all about, Morty. Szechuan. That's my one-armed man. I'm not driven by avenging my dead family, Morty. That was fake. Uh -uh. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Enough! You have been treating us like doormats for months and we're sick and tired of it! Wow, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. And I guess all I can say is, EAT MY DUST! He's getting away! Stop him! This sucks. How come that manager guy always makes us do work? Yeah. <laughs> that oil was just getting cool, too. <laughs> By confederacy, like places and shit. And at first, she's just like a regular ass person. She was a nurse. And that's when she was like, I know I can do better than this. Like, I know I can free way more slaves than what you guys are doing right now. And that's when she went to the colonel and was like, I could totally be a spy for you. You look well. Are you exercising? I have begun to do Pilates. I heard that's good. I like it. Yes. <laughs> and here you are without your gun. That's pretty ironic, huh? No, Pam, once again, you're confusing the word ironic with you are an idiot. What's ironic is that every other store we drive by is a gun shop. Oh, okay, so then what's satire? Nobody really knows. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. South Park We need a little Christmas miracle. Lock and load. We're going in. This is the show you definitely were not allowed to watch when you were younger, but probably watched anyway. Trey Parker and Matt Stone's animated adult series became infamous for its profane and unrelenting parody of all things. And we do mean all things. Dad, Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. The show is the epitome of social commentary achieved through lowbrow humor and seldomly forgoes the grotesque, violent, and sexually explicit to get a laugh. What separates South Park from the rest is its ability to lampoon all sides of a controversial topic, but at the show's core is an unabashed immaturity that even the most pretentious comedy snobs have to tip their hats to. All right, just run with me on this, Eric. Say, Eric, do you like fish sticks? Yeah? You like putting fish sticks in your mouth? Yeah? Well, what are you, Eric? A gay fish? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.